the Reichstag fire. Very cool topic, very interesting, comes up quite a lot, um, but actually very simple. Well, a lot of students get caught up in the fact telling the story of what happened and who was to blame. It's actually not important. What's really important about the Reichstag fire is the consequences of it. All right, that's the key thing. Not who did it, why they did it. It's what happened afterwards. Okay, that's the key thing to remember here. So. To set the, state, set the scene, um, January 1933, Hitler had won an election. He had won um, a whole bunch of seats and he'd been appointed chancellor. There's a video on it that I've also done. Okay, So that was in January 1933. On the 27th of February, the Reichstag, the German parliament, burned down. On the 28th of February, day after, Hindenburg used his um, emergency decrees power, Article 48, to pass the decree for the protection of the people and state. The decree for the protection of the people and state. Basically emergency powers. And then on the 5th of March, Hitler had new elections and he won um, 288 seats in that. And on the 24th of March, the Enabling Act was passed. So that's super easy to remember. Elections, fire, decree for the protection of the people and the state, new elections, Enabling Act. All right. Now, the Reichstag fire is essential in understanding how Hitler was able to do so well in those March elections and how he was able to pass the uh, Enabling Act. So... Situation, 1933, Hitler was chancellor, but his number of his votes had decreased. I think he'd lost um, 34 seats. Um, he had only 33% of the seats in the Reichstag, not the majority he wanted to pass laws. He had to have over 50% to pass the laws, but he had to have two thirds of the Reichstag, or all the support of the Reichstag, to change the Weimar constitution, which he wanted to do to make him all powerful. All right, so he needs two thirds to change the constitution. Um, the communists in January 1933 won 100 seats, so they're quite a big, big party, 17% of the vote. The other thing was Hitler was chancellor, but he actually had very limited power. Right? He, the president had all the presidential power, and the Nazi cabinet, the government, only had Hitler, and of the 12 other members, only two were Nazis. It was a coalition. So whilst Hitler looked like he had loads of power, not enough, certainly nowhere enough and near enough for him, okay, that he wanted. And his power depended on the support of the other parties. Thing is, 18 months later, after the January election, Hitler had eliminated, eliminated all other political opposition. Everything gone. Germany was a one-party state and Hitler was the absolute undisputed ruler within 18 months. The question is, how did he do that? Now, First thing Hitler did when he came to power in January was he said, look, I want new elections in March because I want a majority, okay? Um, and he wanted the two-thirds of the majority, they were for March 1933. Now, because he was chancellor, he was able to control the police in Germany to help him, so to, to ensure uh, peaceful and um, free elections, okay? Now, on the 27th of February, um, news broke that the Reichstag itself was engulfed in flames. All right. Um, now, the police there found a Dutch guy. Um, his name was Van der Lubbe. Apologies for the pronunciation. V A N, new word, D E R, all lowercase, and then capital L U B B E. Van der Lubbe, Lubbe, Lubbe. Don't care how you pronounce it, just spell it right. Okay? And he was a Dutch communist. He'd only arrived in Germany the week before, um, and he was caught kind of red-handed and with like petrol and matches and stuff. Um, and the police caught him, and Hitler went, oh my God, the communists have set fire to the Reichstag. They're trying to overthrow the state and the government. Okay? And he said to Hindenburg, look, we need to do something about this. And Hindenburg said, okay, all right, I'll use Article 48, emergency powers, a decree, and it'll be called the Decree for the Protection of the People and the State. And I've said that a lot, big clue, use it. All right, the Decree for the Protection of the People and the State. And essentially, it stopped all those personal freedoms that the Weimar Constitution gave people. Freedom of speech, 
uh, freedom of press, freedom of assembly, all those civil liberties. Um, but it also massively increased the power of the police. So they could arrest, they could um, confiscate property, the property, they could search property, uh, they could detain or keep arrest and keep people in jail for an unlimited amount of time without a trial, suspension of law. Um, they could also ban meetings, that's the freedom of assembly, and they could close newspapers. So those police powers are really key because Hitler used those and actually that emergency decree lasted for 12 years until the fall of the Nazis. Right. So. The key point about the Reichstag fire is, it happened, Dutch communist was arrested for it, Hitler said the communists are trying to take over, Hindenburg passed the emergency decree, and essentially it enabled the Nazis to deal with the opposition, so that they could do much better in the March elections. All right, cool. So, the result. Goering, who was in charge of Prussia, arrested 4,000 communist leaders that night um, in the March elections, which were six days after the Reichstag fire. Wow, that was lucky. Um, six days afterwards. In the meantime, the Nazis controlled the police and they drafted in the SA as auxiliary police auxiliaries. I think in Prussia there were like 50,000 of them. Essentially, Hitler's personal army became the police. And that meant that any attacks the, the SA did were not stopped by the police. And they broke up opposition meetings, and they attacked political opponents. In fact, there were 70 deaths in those six days. 70. Thousands. Second point, so not only did the police control, not only the Nazis controlled the police, thousands, secondly, thousands of communists and social democrat members were arrested and sent to concentration camps because of the decree for the protection of people and state. Um, the SA broke up political meetings, uh, anti-Nazi newspapers were closed, um, and, and a really nice sort of key point to remember here, not, not nice, sorry, third point to remember, is that because the communists were presented as, be, as trying to take over, all the rich industrialists, the business people, thought, this is terrible, we can't have a communist revolution, I'll lose everything. Who hates the communists? The Nazis. I'll give loads of money to the Nazis, because they'll stop the communists. So Hitler got loads and loads of money from them, which he used for propaganda and, and, and to help fund the election. Now, um, the result was the March 1933 election, where Hitler won it, and he won 288 seats. He won 288 seats, yes. But the communists won 81, and the Social Democrats won 120. So Hitler didn't have a majority, didn't have 50%, and he certainly didn't have the two-thirds that he needed to change the constitution. All right. So, Hitler used the emergency powers that Hindenburg had passed to ban the Communist Party members from entering the Reichstag. Just, no, 81 people, not coming in. All right. Then, he kind of persuaded the Nationalist Party, which were quite a right-wing party, to support him and the Nazis, and he said to the Centre Party, which was Catholic, look, support me, and, and I'll, I'll, I'll protect the, the, the Catholic Church. I'll, I'll leave it alone. I won't do anything to change it. All right. And so the Centre Party and the Nationalist Party combined. The Nationalists had 52 seats. Catholics had 74. Hitler had 288. And together, that was control of the Reichstag. But Hitler wasn't going to take any chances. In a meeting in the Reichstag, he brought the SA and the SE in, and they stood around outside it, all gunned up, and um, gunned up, armed. And they intimidated the deputies, the, the Reichstag members, and they were trying to um, was it persuade them to do the right thing, to vote the right way. And it worked, because the Enabling Act was passed on the 24th of March, with 444 votes for it, and only 94 against. Okay. So, Reichstag fire, it's all part of Hitler gaining power. Um, doesn't matter who did it, really. It matters who was blamed for it, van der Lubbe, Dutch communist. It was used as an excuse to get rid of the communists, to deal with that opposition. The emergency powers were used to help Hitler gain more seats in the Reichstag and then pass the Enabling Act. All right, I hope that makes sense.